So uh, today we're going to talk about digital assets and their role in wealth management moving forward and what that might look like for you know institutions, current status of the market, and then where we go from here. If you are new here, my name is Jake Claver. I am the director for Digital Ascension Group. We are the only multifamily office that specializes in digital assets here in the U.S. Uh, we provide our clients custody and wealth advisory. If that's something you're interested in, then check out the websites below. I actually just had a conversation with Fidelity yesterday uh, about their institutional custody for digital assets. They're still only offering Bitcoin and Ethereum. I believe they offer uh, USDC as well. Um, the majority of institutions don't hold Tether, but um, stable coins are right around the corner. We are seeing regulations, you know, slowly making their way through Congress. Um, hopefully we get a, you know, SOB 121 is revoked. Uh, and we do see, you know, some of these other bills that are being voted on come through as well. Uh, one of those is the stable coin. Uh, actually, it's the CBDC bill. Basically, it'll make it illegal for uh, the Treasury or the Fed here in the U.S. to issue a CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency. Um, it's my thesis that the U.S. probably ends up with a bunch of stable coins uh, or private stable coins that are backed by um, U.S. De dollar denominated debt, treasuries, bonds, cash. Uh, that's probably where it goes. So I think that that will provide a, a high yield way for people to earn income. Uh, if they are holding those assets, I think that you will be incentivized to hold uh, stable coins. You know, uh, we are seeing people paying out five, six, seven, eight, nine percent uh, on some some stable coins right now uh, in certain circumstances. So, I think that that will change the way that people allocate. You know, if you're able to hold a secure, riskless asset uh, in a new way that allows you to generate, you know, sustainable yields for your clients. Uh, it's definitely something that we have in our strategy at Digital Wealth Partners uh, and, you know, work with our clients to implement. So that's just one way. Um, but as far as, you know, allocations to Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, we have seen, you know, in 2018, Bill Henman at the SEC gave a stamp of approval uh, for both of those. And that's still kind of the precedent that exists for uh, financial institutions and other people in the space. We've seen both those ETFs uh, get approved by the SEC. Um, I think... We go live with the Ethereum ETF on Monday. Well, actually, Monday will be a holiday, so it'll be Tuesday this next week. But, um, you know, things are moving along, which is great. Um, it's good to see some of the adoption uh, in this. They're still very, it's still very nascent for wealth managers to even deal with this. You have, you've seen a couple different ways of going about it. So um, some clients, some clients want to hold their own crypto. And uh, in those circumstances, there are some solutions that allow the wealth advisor to come in and um, basically, you know, give them some options uh, that they recommend, recommendations. And uh, that allows the individual to, you know, co-sign on that transaction and then move their assets into whatever DeFi pool or protocol uh, the advisor has, you know, stated is a good idea. Uh, sometimes that's leverage against those assets. Um, sometimes it's some type of yield that's being paid on them, um, could be a liquidity pool that they're participating in. These are all new concepts for wealth managers that are used to dealing with TradFi, but, um, I, it's, it, it's going to change and revolutionize the way that wealth managers even interact with their clients and also the options that they have to be able to generate yield for them. So we, uh, have one of the seven or eight institutional custody accounts here in the U.S. Uh, for our clients, uh, where we are a uh, signer on their account. We hold those assets in qualified custody, insured up to $50 million, uh, and we can work with them to delegate those assets or participate uh, in other things that allow them to earn yield. Uh, staking, delegated proof of stake, is offered through the platform that we use, and that allows our clients to receive income into those accounts uh, tax-free. Uh, because they are multi-signature uh, and they do not have full control of those assets. So that's a lot of the considerations that we're seeing uh, when dealing with clients is just that um, you know, people don't necessarily want to recognize taxes or tax implications or revenue or income uh, on these assets immediately when 
uh, they're received uh, like you are just if it goes to your personal wallet. So that's one of the other benefits of working with a wealth advisor or wealth manager uh, for your digital assets is, again, they're going to be a co-signer uh, on those transactions, and therefore uh, you are not in full control of the assets and do not have the tax implications. So those are just some of the things we work with our clients on. Um, but as this progresses, I think smart contracts are going to take over uh, a lot of what the rebalancing looks like. You know, we're still very nascent when it comes to that. We do have partners for the reporting um, and the aggregation of the information around the digital assets and how the portfolio is performing for our clients. Um, not very many providers for that. It's still really a blue ocean uh, for a lot of uh, the TradFi services to move into this asset class. And again, you know, until we have full regulation here in the U.S. around it, I don't think that that's going to be the case, but we're progressive. Uh, we're working within the confines of the law and the regulations that do exist for this stuff. Uh, and we're on the bleeding edge of that at Digital Ascension Group and Digital Wealth Partners. So um, that's what makes me feel qualified to <laughs> even speak on this. Um but in general, I do think that digital assets are going to play a much larger role than people anticipate in uh, portfolio management moving forward. Um, this is a completely different asset class, and it's really still speculative at this point. Uh, but as we see utility move in for these assets, uh, it's going to be very interesting the ways that you're going to be able to earn income with them for your clients and then also uh, provide leverage against them. Um, if it's, it's basically software loans against software that's being used and value being transmitted over networks and you hold a piece of that network that allows those transactions to happen right and so you could loan that out to somebody else that needs it for their business model or to be able to be interoperable with that network and earn a yield in that capacity um, I think that there will be situations where FIs will need certain assets in order to transact business and you might be able to lend it to them to earn a yield and they might also take it from you uh, as collateral while they're using it, uh, and give you a loan against it, right? And you may have tri-party agreements at some of the stuff that we're working on right now with our clients. Um, you may be able to lock and escrow those assets in qualified custody uh, and then delegate that liquidity or the ownership or the usage to somebody else. Um, that would allow you to be compliant with some of the proposed rules for custody by the SEC uh, in 2023. I think February 2023 is when they put that out. And when people read it, they thought, there's no way that you can do this. You can't hold assets in qualified custody all the time. They've got to be removed from that platform to be able to execute trades and transact. Well, with what's coming down the pike for this stuff, as things are tokenized, those are all possibilities, uh, which actually leads to safer market dynamics. So less risk for clients, which is great. Uh, so that's one of the other things that will change. You know, I, I think a lot of these uh, larger financial institutions, um, and wealth management groups, you know, again, there's a few partnerships out there that allow you to hold a very small <laughs> portion of digital assets, just Bitcoin and Ethereum for most of them. Uh, we work with uh, standard custody and trust, and we have up to 31 assets that we can hold there. Anchorage, Kraken, um, Archax, Hextrust. Uh, there's a lot of different providers uh, across the globe uh, that are working to be the leaders in this space. Uh, we have open conversations with all of them. And so um, it's just going to be very interesting to see the market dynamics uh, as this is implemented and how it shifts portfolio strategies. Uh, again, if you can have guaranteed returns and you're basically investing in a component of software that is used at a global scale in some capacity, uh, I think that that's a really low risk way to earn returns for your clients. So that's what we're looking at when implementing it in portfolio strategies. The other thing that we uh, see as, you know, a big value add right now is the capability to borrow against these digital assets and certain DeFi protocols uh, and with certain partners that we have. Uh, and then as long as it's responsible, right, there's a lot of volatility in this space. Uh, so you don't, you know, I can't really give numbers here, but low LTV um, would be what would we work with our clients on, uh, and then we take that liquidity and then, you know, put it into more traditional, uh, investments to hedge the volatility in digital assets, uh, get exposure and diversification, and then also create cash flows for our clients. Um, 
a lot of time they're real world assets uh, that we can you know use tax strategies with also uh, depreciate uh, whatever it is against the income uh, and offset the tax implications as well. So that's a lot of the stuff that we're working with. Uh, but I do think that you know as portfolio managers, wealth managers become more educated on this asset class, it is going to take up a lot more than just a 5% allocation. Uh, and again, we do need regulations and adoption, uh, and a lot of that will also foster um, a little more trust uh, in this asset class. So hopefully this is then thought-provoking for you. If you're not working with a wealth manager for your digital assets, if you do have north of you know half a million in investment, that is something that we're open to. Uh, and we'll work with clients on. Uh, if you do want to reach out to digitalwealthpartners.net, happy to have a conversation with you there. Um, and if not, you know, a lot of people are still in the mindset of not your keys, not your crypto. At least you've, you know, thinking progressively about things uh, and what you might be able to do to, you know, hedge yourself or get some diversification, um, better manage your own assets uh, as things move forward. So, with that, we'll wrap it up, and we'll see you on the next one.